And today's guest is a man who goes by JC. You might have seen his YouTube channel, Wrong to Strong. This guy is a former gangbanger from the streets of Southside Chicago. He sends me to 26th Street, you know, a little village, um, just a gang infested area. But I, I rolled with all the older guys because I was willing to get my hands dirty. His family is from Mexico. And when he was a teenager, he became a drug runner and a pot smuggler for a Mexican cartel, La Familia Michoacan. This is back in the early 90s. The first trip, they made me check into the hotel in downtown Apatzingan and I couldn't leave. You know, I, I had to stay there until the car was ready, ready. It was like a dream come true because like I started seeing all the trucks with rims and sounds and you could tell it was like narco world. Eventually he got caught and ended up spending four years in a brutal Mexican prison before getting released and transferred to the U.S. I got stabbed on the first day. I walked in, I had, you know, I looked at like American. I had George, a Jordan outfit on. They seen that I was American. They asked me for my shoes. I, I still thought I was tough. They, they stabbed me, took my shoes. He went back and forth to prison. He made millions of dollars trafficking Mexican pot for the cartel all over the country. This guy made me look like a nickel and dimer. There, you're constantly on the move. As soon as you get up, you're picking up your phones, you're moving, you're driving this car, taking that. You're talking to people while you're driving. Eventually, he got busted selling five kilos of cocaine and he went to the feds. That's where he cleaned himself up. Yeah, I could feel the death in that place. A lot of people have died in that prison, a lot. I left everything behind. I just, I wanted to get as far as I could from Chicago because I was done. Today, he is clean and fully legit. He runs a gym in Phoenix, Arizona. He's a public speaker, an author. He runs a great YouTube channel. He's been featured on National Geographic and other TV shows. And he's here today on The Connect to tell us his story. Welcome to JC from Wrong to Strong. I, I tell people my, my flight and fight mode has been turned on since the age of 10. And I just learned to turn it off not too long ago. That was the genesis of The Connect. You were the original uh, motivation and inspiration for me to do this show. Oh, Did I nice. tell you that? No, no. Yeah, because I, I saw you doing it and I was like, wow, like this is all, all you need to do is just talk about prison and you get millions of views. <laughs> yeah. oh, shit. So thank you. You should own a piece of the equity in this company. You know? <laughs> nah, just glad that it's uh, reaching people who needs to reach. That's all yeah, man. man. So, uh, you know, you've, you've obviously, you've been on National Geographic before. You've told your story. Um, and of course, like typical... Uh, corporate media they left out a whole bunch of stuff so that's kind of what i what i brought you in here for was to like fill in like the the information oh, of your cell because i had already been in american prison before so i was like so you know set me up and they're like nah you go find where you're gonna stay because in mexico it's different they don't give you stuff what? <laughs> you gotta find your own way it's like a little city inside of a little city yeah, so man. you know i'm standing there with my bags and this is the first time i see like gang members with like tattoos on their faces and i'm talking about the early 90s you mm -hmm. know what i mean so scary looking dudes i mean he was trying to put his hands down on the floor and his all his bones were broken on his hands so it it looked like jello i can't even explain it it didn't even look real it looked like a cartoon and the way that they were beating him and, and the way they stuck the, the broom, like it was, I had never heard a human scream like that. And you know, I've, I've done damage to people. I've heard, I've seen people do it. I had never seen a human, I had never heard a human being cry like that. It really changed me, I think. You know, back in the day, I would wake up at three in the morning and the first thing I would listen to would be, be better have my money. And it, and it was <laughs> yeah. like yeah, uh, yeah. all the swearing and the bass and everything. And I would leave my house like a Tasmanian devil, like mm. to work. I would be going a hundred miles an hour. One day we were fighting really bad. Me and my wife were fighting really bad. You know, she was getting tired of just dealing with me. I, I was very, very damaged. We were about to split up and, and I went downstairs and it was dark in the living room. It was about three in the morning. And for the first time in my life, I was like, I'm going to get on my knees. I'm going to see if this works. The young version of me, <laughs> I, I would tell him to not listen to your mind because your mind reminds you of all the bad stuff and all the guilt and everything. And your heart kind of tells you the truth all the time, even when it hurts. Most people look at diet just like the food. 
mm-hmm. everything you consume is your diet whether it's music stuff you watch stuff you read stuff mm-hmm. you, I, i mean everything you put into your body is your diet it's not all about the money and i always tell people you know not all money is good money it's funny because back then i used to say don't let money change you and now what i say let love change you the uh, people i was working for you know uh um, hit me up they blessed me they gave me a brand new truck gave me i think they gave me about 15 20 g's i can't remember um it was a big chunk of money mm-hmm. uh i wanted to change so i used a little bit of that money to go to like cdl school and i was gonna like change my life and and <laughs> how does the cartel get a hold of you once you get out though like Oh, I mean, they knew where I was going back to Chicago, my neighborhood. I, I mean, all the same people that I was working for were still, still over there. Oh, okay. You know, um, I don't know if you're familiar with Valerie, Cato's wife, one of the twins, twins wives also. Mm-mm. Okay, so we'll get into that later. Okay. <laughs> But she, she was the one that knew everything that was going on with me and everything. So she let them know I was home and everything. They, they took care of me. They blessed me. Um, and that's when I, I went to CDL school and... I started looking for a job, but nobody wanted to give me a job because love. of my record. The, just the love that you share with him is so powerful. You know, one of the biggest things that I love doing now is talking to him, telling him how I'm feeling, and just telling him <clears throat> that I need, I need his help, I need his strength to, to get by when I'm having bad days, you know, or, or just having trouble in my life. I think one of the biggest things that I've learned is to trust him. Um, Tell me about your involvement, uh, meeting, and uh, being around the rapper DMX. Well, I met him through Cato, one of my very close friends. Uh, uh, He was starting his own record label in Chicago, and and, um, he became very good friends with DMX. I was always with Cato around those days and that time, and so I got introduced to DMX, and... um, You no, know, me and him uh, hit it off. I mean, he was he was a cool cat. Uh, my job was just, you know, keep him safe. That was it. Like, watch his back. Uh, whenever he was in Chicago, uh, same thing with Cato. So uh, when I ended up moving out here to Arizona, you know, he had a house out here. I, I became part of the Phoenix Rough Riders uh, since God taught me self-control. That's true toughness right there. Um, that's being a real man, you know, having self-control and, and loving God. Um, not because you have to do it, because you want to do it. There's other ways to being tough, you know? <laughs> it's, we have the misconception that being tough is like, you're, you're like this fighter that beats everybody up and, and then that's not it. That's not it. You know who a tough guy is? Jesus is a tough guy because he knew what was gonna happen to him the next day, and he still went with it. That's a tough guy. Because I don't know if I would be able to do that. I'm gonna be honest. If you told me they're gonna kill you tomorrow, they're gonna put you on a cross, they're gonna whoop you, they're gonna do those things, I would probably fly out to Hawaii. I met Julio, what, 1992 probably? 91, 92, 93, somewhere around there, man. And, uh just looking for love man you know what i'm saying and, and i come from an abusive abusive home i was abused as a child mentally physically emotionally physically when i say physically not you know like not to the extent of some other people but i, I have hands put on me real bad um things of that nature and then my dad left and then i was still you know that was my 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 hero But uh, continued looking for whatever it was that, that he he showed me, you know, and idolizing the street life, basically. And I thought maybe, I don't know, who knows, maybe subconsciously I thought maybe by being in the streets I would find him somewhere, you know what I mean? But uh, streets ain't no place for nobody, man. I don't wish him upon my worst enemy, man. And uh, yeah, we're just running the streets, me and Julio for a long time making all the bad choices together. <laughs> one after the other, after the other, that led us to very long rap sheets, and it's crazy, bro. A lot of years behind bars. A lot of years behind them bars, man. All we had to do was just submit. Right there. It's, it's almost incomprehensible. Everybody was trying to outdo the other. It was almost like 
okay, if you cut his head off, then I'm gonna cut his legs off and gut him and then hang him. And it, it got like way out of control. The walls were really closing in on the Barbie. All the cartels were after him. They want to find him and kill him. And he's... They knew what was going to happen. Once they walk you into a room and there's plastic on the floor, you know what time it is. Like, this is what will happen to you. It, it turned out to be one of the most viral videos uh, that went out there, the Barbie, uh, you know, interviewing these guys, asking them questions, and then one of the guy's heads just gets blown off. When the sectors see this video, to them, it's like a nuclear bomb going off. And they are going to go after Barbie with a vengeance. The shocking video sparked a wave of filmed assassinations by various cartels. It just took an ugly turn. Everybody started doing it back and forth to each other, uh, filming executions, beheadings, the most sinister stuff. This is when the people started getting their heads cut off, hanging over bridges. It started getting to where everybody was filming every execution. It started a trend. I mean, just the middle part of your body, no legs, no arms, no head. And everybody was trying to outdo the other. There's certain things that you're just, as a human, you're not meant to see. You just, it just doesn't sit well with, with your, your mental health. let you go you got a lot on your plate right you've you've done this multiple times i would love for you to do it here to wrap up this episode if not i could do it as well uh lead us in prayer before you leave oh, thank you because i think this is very important i've seen you do it on other shows like i said a uh, very important aspect of my life too going to church every sunday so um if you want to yes, yes. i'd love I would, to end the episode I would, I would that way i would love to 
Father God, thank you for for this for this show for what He's doing. Thank you that I hope this message you know reaches who it needs to reach, and just that they know it's never too late to turn to you, Father God. That you know you are there waiting for them. That you love them, and you you could teach us how to love, and just keep giving us the wisdom and the strength to keep doing what what you want us to do. Your will, not ours, and. Just keep giving us the strength, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. That fills my heart, man. Thank you so much for for coming in today. I appreciate you being patient with me. (laughs) Patience is a virtue that it's kind of a lost art in today's world. So... And I knew from the beginning, I'm like, man, I'm being a really crappy communicator right now, but uh, I, I appreciate your good faith and everything that you have going on and the people that you're inspiring. It, it, it really, really, you know, fills me. This is Batman. We have to go. <laughs>